If you haven't heard about the SBIR and the STTR programs, then in this video, you are about to discover why these federal programs might be your startup going ticket to get non-dilutive funding so that you can bring your innovative ideas into reality. My fellow innovators, we're talking about securing over $2 million of non-dilutive funding, or otherwise known as free money for your startup. So that means you do not have to give away any equity of your company. So stick around as I do a deep dive as to what is the SPIR and STTR program, how you and your startup can benefit from them, and my top three tips on how you could secure an SPIR in 2024. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Stacey Chin from KeepYourEquity.co, and our mission is to help startups secure non-dilutive funding. We specialize in science and tech startups by helping them to secure funding from federal programs such as the SBIR and the STTR. And we also advise lots of other private and public businesses as well as NGOs to help them secure funding from federal grants and contracting opportunities. So you might be asking yourself, what is the SBIR or STTR program and why are they such a big deal for startups? So let's unravel this mystery together. SBIR stands for Small Business Innovation Research and STTR stands for Small Business Technology transfer. And these are prestigious federal programs administered by the U.S. Small Business Administration, or SBA, designed to empower startups in science and technology with the essential funding they need to transform their ideas into market-ready solutions. But here is the exciting part. These programs are not just about giving away money. They're about investing in your vision, enabling you to evolve your concept into a tangible, impactful reality. Startups can secure funding anywhere from $50,000 all the way to a substantial $2 million of non-dilutive funding. That means you get to keep full ownership of your company, which is very different compared to traditional funding avenues where investors or venture capitalists typically seek equity, aka a portion of your company. I know this sounds way too good to be true, but there is a catch. Pursuing SBR funding for your startup can come with its own set of challenges. First and foremost, the SBR program is crazy competitive. Due to its lucrative benefits, thousands of startups apply each year, but only a fraction receives some funding. So there's no guarantee that going down this path will get you funding. That means you have to dedicate your hard work, time, sweat, and tears into preparing really strong SBR grant applications to even just have a shot. And these efforts can be super time and resource intensive. It requires a lot of strategy, technical expertise, and extensive paperwork to fill out. And for those reasons, we have lots of great resources on our YouTube channel, along with our website, keepyourequity.co, where you can find lots of tips and advice of how to secure non dilutive funding through the SBIR and STTR program, along with other resources and templates for you to consider as well. Another challenge is that if you want to pursue SBIR funding, startups should prepare for really, really long timelines, not only to prepare and submit an application, but even during the review process and in the actual funding disbursement. Sometimes startups won't even know the outcomes of their SBIR application six months after submission. So at this point, I hope I haven't scared you away just yet. Since the SBIR and STTR program is still such a fantastic way to get non-dilutive funding for your startup. The beauty of the SBR program lies in its focus on innovation and research-driven projects. So if your startup is working on groundbreaking ideas or technologies, these programs are specifically tailored to support such ventures. They not only provide financial backing, but also validates the significance and potential impact of your work. And this validation can be such a powerful asset for your startup, especially for future investors and customers. Also, navigating through the complexities of these programs can in itself be very rewarding. The process challenges you founders to refine your business plan, clarify your research or development efforts, and hone in on your proposal writing skill. And these are all invaluable assets in the entrepreneurial world. And while the timelines might be really long, the potential payoff in terms of funding and industry recognition is substantial. So while the path of securing an SBIR or an STTR award can be quite challenging, it's important to remember that the rewards at the end of the day can immensely benefit science and tech startups. It is a path worth considering, in my opinion, especially if you're committed to innovation and looking to propel your startup with without diluting any ownership. So with that in mind, if you're still interested in pursuing SBR and STTR funding in 2024 for your startup, I'm gonna share three tips to help you get started on this journey. But before we do, I would greatly appreciate if you can like, comment, and subscribe to this channel. And by doing so, you'll gain a wealth of knowledge on how you can secure non diluted funding for your startup. All right, now let's get into it. So my tip number one is to outline your go-to-market strategy. SBR and STTR funding, or research and development grant, helps support further research on new technologies and innovation. That means founders 
not only have to think about their R&D strategy, but they also must explain in their SBIR application how those technical efforts will support their commercialization goal. A well-defined go-to-market strategy is essential as it demonstrates the commercial viability of the project to the review panel. And this strategy ensures that the product or technology being developed is aligned with the market needs and customer pain points. And this will enhance the potential success for your innovation to enter the market. And it also plays a crucial role in guiding the effective allocation of SBIR funding by prioritizing aspects critical for market growth. Tip number two is to identify the appropriate SBIR or STTR program for your startup and innovation. So many U.S. federal agencies offer SBIR and STTR programs, with some examples including the NIH, the NSF, the DOD, the DOE, USDA, and so many more. And each of these agencies have different missions and interests within their individual programs themselves. That means founders must choose the most appropriate SBIR program so that their technologies and startup business goals are best aligned with the right resources, expertise, and opportunities to increase the likelihood of securing funding. And this step is very important to ensure that the startup is compliant with the funding agency's goals and mission so that they can offer the much needed support to help startups grow their businesses. Finally, my last tip is to start your application early and to allocate sufficient time to prepare and to complete an SBIR application. So as the SBIR program is so competitive, it is essential for founders to spend the necessary time, energy, and resources to develop a really strong application. I'm not gonna sugarcoat it, but pursuing SBIR funding can be meticulous and resource intensive. And this is because this process requires founders to develop robust and well thought out R&D strategies and commercialization plans. And many first time founders often underestimate the skill of this undertaking. I usually tell founders that preparing a solid phase one application would typically take about three months of dedicated time. So make sure to start your application well in advance of the deadline. Rushing through this process can significantly diminish the quality and effectiveness of your application. So take the time to carefully prepare every component of the proposal since this is essential for enhancing your successes to secure SBIR funding. And with that, thank you so much for watching till the end of this video. I hope you found these tips helpful if you're looking to raise SBIR funding for your startup in 2024. And if you haven't done so, I would greatly appreciate it. you can like this video, subscribe to this channel, and then comment below as you continue to learn new ways to keep your equity throughout your non-dilutive fundraising journey. And as always, don't forget to check out our website at keepyourequity.co where you find lots of other tips, resources, templates, and courses coming soon to help you secure non-dilutive funding. Thanks again for joining me today, and I'll see you in the video very soon.